Hello and welcome to Top of the Link, episode 77. I'm John Condon. I'm Tony Rucco. And I'm Rich Caruba. Top Bowling is proud to be bringing you the latest information from the bowling industry, bowling tips, and updates on the largest internet bowling website, bowlingball.com. It's been two months and you guys don't sound like you're feeling any better. No. No, this is the longest cold in history. Exactly. Never. This is horrible. How many episodes have we shot today? This is our eighth. Oh my. Oh. Oh, I hope we haven't bored you. Nope. I think we've done good. They're not going to be bored. They're going to see it once a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Good point. We're the ones that are like, wow. Well, we're now in January of 2011. That's right. January 14th. Yes. Should be the air date of this unless John messes something up. Hey, why does it got to be my fault? You just, you may. Well, you may mess something up. You may proceed, sir. All right. Why don't you read today's questions? Unless you have a question for Rich. Rich is sick of me asking him questions. All right, so read Dan's question. All right, this question is from Dan B. How much does ball layout affect what part of the lane you play on? All the balls I've ever owned have been drilled with a five inch pin to PAP. Pin above my fingers. I've always played around the second arrow and would like to move inside more, somewhere around the third arrow. Would shortening my pin to PAP to say four inches and bringing it below my fingers have any noticeable impact on where I play the lane? Should be a question mark. How much of a difference in ball reaction would I see between these two layouts? The answer be a question mark. Tony's our pro shop expert. Why don't you begin? Oh, well, we can break it down because he has a, a bunch of questions. Yes. The, the first question is how much does ball layout affect what part of the lane you play? Ball layout is in the top two or three factors, obviously, in overall ball reaction, which is going to, in turn, affect where you play on the lane. Number one being cover stock. Cover stock first. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's right. Cover stock, layout, lane conditions, all th those three. I mean, and lane condition is, that was where I was going to go next. Where are you going to play in the lane? I hear people say it all the time that I want to play in the, I want to play the fourth era. If you're, if the shot isn't there, you you have no business playing there. So, if the shot, if you can play the third arrow on the condition you bowl on, which most house shots you can, that's only the 15th board. So it's not really, you're not really deep, you're almost in the, what we call the track area. So most likely this is going to work out. If you were t trying to tell us you wanted to play the fifth arrow, well then it's going to come down to lane condition. But for most typical house shots, I would say uh, with 10 to 15, I mean that, that gap of boards is a pretty big window on a house shot. Yeah, and, and we tend to refer to that range at, at, at the bowling arrows about 15 feet past the foul line. Right. Some bowlers sight sooner and some right. beyond that, but that's just a typical range finder uh, distance from the foul line that we use as a reference point. Okay. Uh, you have to remember that the ball and eventually has to get out to the right break point down the lane, about two-thirds of the way down the lane, and then hooked in a pocket. So regardless of your angle of entry to the break point, uh, you you have to get the ball to arrive at the pocket 17 and a half board. Right. So uh, your, your approach to getting that down there, uh, the variables are how you bowl, what your rev rate, your ball speed, uh, the oil condition, uh, the lane condition, oiling pattern, uh, and the bowling ball you choose. All those things determine the, ang the right angle of entry consistently down to the break point. So to, to have a predetermined notion where you're going to play the lane, uh, you either have to have a, a pretty good understanding of the lane conditions and how it changes on the time of day you bowl, uh, or you're going to try to force yourself into something. It's like saying, I'm going to drive all the way from Daytona Beach to Miami and I'm going to stay in the right-hand lane. Well, you might not be able to. You might have to change lanes in the car. Same here. You have to have an open mind when you bowl and let your ball be your guide, so, so to speak. Exactly. And so you have a, a quick understanding. This is get much more technical, and I think we've talked about it before. Pin distance from your positive axis point. The further the pin is from your positive axis point, the further down the lane the ball is going to travel before it starts to get into that ball motion or that, that hit that break point and make its motion towards the pocket. The closer that is to your positive axis point, the earlier it's going to do that. So by shortening the distance from your pin to your PAP, you will change the motion of the ball. If you drill two balls, two identical bowling balls, one with a 5-inch pin to PAP and one with a 4-inch PAP, the four inch one will start up sooner. It'll get into that motion sooner than the five inch one. There's other factors that Rich touched on. And again, it's just that's a tough question for us, Dan, because we yeah. can't we can't tell you where you're gonna be able to play on the lane. Yeah, way too many variables when it comes to layout. Will it change your overall ball motion? Definitely. 
any variance in layout will change the ball motion. And the the distance, the four or five inch, doesn't state whether it's going to be above or below your fingers. Right. That, that's another variable in the right. layout. There's right. there's a lot more you can get into on that. And if you want, go into some of our articles and go into some of our drilling techniques and uh, even some of our layout, our ball reviews. We talk about the layouts we use, and you can use. There's tons of different techniques, and there's a, a big thing right now where we use what's called dual angles to adjust pin height, uh, and and that will affect pin above or below your fingers. So well, one of the things that uh, uh, we were talking about, I don't know if it was in another episode or even between episodes, uh, you want to create your own team. You want to have people that you can rely on. So it might be your pro shop operator, your bowling coach, and uh, also uh, any maybe your teammates or somebody that you respect and that you discuss bowling with all the time and get a collaborative input uh, so you can help determine the best layout patterns and, and the way to play the lanes to get the most out of your session when you bowl. Definitely. Exactly. Going back to the, the dual angle, the second angle of the number <coughs> is going to basically put the pin either above or below. Right. That, control pin that has nothing to do with the distance. Right. It was so, just control pin height. Right. Good question. I know there's a lot more we can talk about for that. Yeah, that, that's a conversation that yeah. people can have. You can have that for hours because you can talk about all the variances. The other thing, just to keep in mind, Dan, because if you're talking about newer, higher performance balls, you also need to know where the mass bias is in relation to your PAP. We could drill you two balls again, two identical balls. We could put the pin the same distance from your PAP and move the mass bias position and completely change that ball motion because that, that's how we're turning the block and the, how we're rotating that around your axis. So keep, it, keep that in mind. A lot of people don't know about the mass bias. They don't, maybe their pro shop doesn't even talk about it much and they just let that fall wherever it falls and then you need to know where that is. So keep that in mind. So many variables. Okay. Uh, we'll give you a real quick overview of what we've been talking about these eight episodes. We've been talking a lot about Bullversity. Uh, part of that is because it's, it's rich, Rich's little project. That's his little baby. He does most of our content. Uh, so he's been uh, the big contributor to Bullversity. So if you want to just give a quick close on what we're, our, again, almost like an episode, the first one we did, what our goal is and why we're doing it? Sure. Uh, Bull, <coughs> Bullversity is our learning center. Uh, what we're going to evolve to is where you can uh, have some choices where to go inside of Bullversity, the library, where you would expect to read all the articles, uh, whether it's product articles or coaching tips and articles or anything contributing writers might write about. Uh, you can go through our library and find an article and read when, as you're interested. Sometimes there'll be little video clips associated with it. Then you go to the Media Center, and that's another choice in Bullversity. And our Media Center will have all the videos, Talk Bowling, what you're watching now, or the Ball Reaction videos, which I think are outstanding uh, ways of finding out the latest equipment and comparing it to what you might already have. Uh, so they're very well done. Also, some of the videos that I do, just little headshot videos of me at my desk talking to you about uh, maybe giving a little bit more insight into some of the articles I've written. So the Media Center will have that, and then we're going to have a Pro Shop section so we can <coughs> separate some of the information and content that we have, whether our videos or, or articles and so on, about the Pro Shop, make it easier for you to find what you're looking for, kind of classify and sort out. We, right now we have well over three or to 400 articles on the website, and it's getting to a point in another year from now, it'll be 500 uh, or more. So we want to make sure that uh, uh, we kind of organize it for you, and that's the whole purpose of Bullversity. Well said. Right. Helping bowlers be better bowlers. I like that. Is that, is that what it's? No, but that's okay. Help Helping bowlers make better decisions. Yeah. Kind of works the same we way. have all kinds of solutions in this place. Tell us about a feature here. All right. Uh, the, our website feature that we're going to talk about today is the Compare It feature. Uh, it is what, it, what it's called. It, it's a feature that allows you to add multiple products to a, a nice screen to compare the products side by side. Uh, we take, you, you can hit Add to Compare, I believe is the button. Mm -hmm. You click Add to Compare and as many products as you want. If you're down to three balls, two balls, four balls, whatever, you, you add them to the Compare. You can do it with bags, you can do it with shoes. 
and it takes all of our attributes and puts them in a in a format. It's column for you, right? And you can see it across the line. So you can see all the perfect scales, which is a feature we talked about. You can see all the cover stocks. So if you if you're down to three balls for whatever reason, because a perfect scale, but maybe one is particle, and you just haven't had good luck with particle, it'll help you see that in a line. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just it brings everything together for you to easily make a better decision, which is what we're here to help you with. Right. Like I just said. Uh, better decisions. So that's the that's the feature we're talking about today. It's very very handy. It's very popular. A lot of our customers like that feature. Uh, and like I said, you can do it with bags. You can do it with shoes. We bring all the attributes together. If you know our site, we have attributes per category. Right. So bags, you'll see if it's roller, if it holds shoes, what size. Shoes, you'll see if they're universal, all that stuff. So uh, I don't know that there's much more to add to the compare feature. It's pretty straightforward. No, nope, that's uh, but it's a very very cool feature. Yep. If you have any suggestions, if it doesn't do something you want it to do, let us know. How can they contact us to do that? I don't know. Well, you can, contact, totally bowling, you can contact bowlingball.com at support at bowlingball.com or uh, through live chat, which is on the top right section of our homepage or every page throughout the site. And Talk Bowling, you can contact us at questions at talkbowling.com. You can leave a comment on any episode that we've shot or you can contact us through Twitter at TalkBowling. You can even uh, put your comments on some of the articles that we've written Definitely. are in Bowlversity. And by the way, some of the articles are chosen for the newsletter feature that we get out a couple of times a week, which is an excellent um, subscription service. We highly recommend it. Very good. All right, this episode is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Starting at less than $5 a month, Web listing from GoDaddy includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to the GoDaddy hosting connection, the place to quickly install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan. GoDaddy also provides a free iPhone, Android, or Blackberry app so you can order directly from your phone or manage your domains easily. Plus, top one viewers can save 10% off their order by using promotion code BULL8 during checkout. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy. That's right. I hope they're still sponsors a month from now. I Two months from now. I thought of that if the codes change, but hey. If the codes change, yeah, we'll, we'll make it. it. We'll make an update somewhere. Better Tony will pay you out of his pocket. I don't know about all that. Um, that's it. Eight episodes deep. Is that it? All right, everyone's going to be very disappointed next week when you watch because it'll just be John and I. And Rich won't be with us, but Rich, thank you. Again. My pleasure. I've enjoyed it. it. I, I hope uh, some of the episodes have been, we've shared some useful information. And uh, these guys do a great job at Talk Bowling. It's going to be around as long as BowlingBall.com is. So uh, please continue to, to listen in and uh, don't be bashful to place your comments. It's been a pleasure getting to learn more about you. You know, we've, we've known you for a long time, but actually having your bio and asking you questions here has been been fun. We all have things to contribute. You know, we're all we're all in the same for the same mission here, the same team. I've chosen to associate myself with bowlingball.com because I think you have such a wide range of things, services, and features to offer. Uh, you know, it's it's the it's the contemporary way uh, to uh, serve the bowling industry, and that's our plan to right. serve the bowling industry. All right, in closing, please remember that Bowling.com is free shipping. That's every item, every day. No handling fees, no packaging fees, no added insurance fees. The price shown on the product page is the price you pay for that product at checkout. No surprises. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye, folks. Very good. I like that. <laughs> was that he remembered to say goodbye, folks? No. Not at see you next time. You yeah. changed it because it was the last one. Last one. <laughs>